Okay, let's go ahead and tear this thing down. Uh, so I think what we'll do here, just looking it over, I think we'll start from this end and our work our way down to this end, just looking at how this plastic is put in here and here. It seems to be um, overlapping, overlapping. So I think the logical place to start is here on the end. So let me get started with that. Okay, you can see, uh, you can see this is all aluminum here in the front. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this fore end while we're here. Interesting, it's a different, it's a different uh, size uh, wrench here. So that's at least two different size Allen wrenches you need to keep. the fore end here. As I mentioned, this is all tapered. It looks like it's secured from the bottom and from the sides also. There's a little bit of, uh, oh, I'm guessing that's the leftover grease from the manufacturing process uh, that's on here. One thing to note, uh, these are not, um, there's no thread lock on these. Guys, no thread lock on these. I don't know if that's by design or what, but uh, no thread lock, so. Anyway, that's the first piece. I will show you the next part that I think we should take off is, is what appears to be the barricade stop here. Looks like there's only four holding this on. Okay, one interesting note. This uh, particular hole right here was really hard to take out. Makes me wonder if it was cross-threaded. Um, there's the uh, barricade stop. You can see underneath here, there's the uh, screw for the, the receiver action screw. This is all aluminum in here. And uh, the only piece that was plastic was just this little piece here that, that includes the barricade stop. There is just slightly a little bit of a barricade stop here. So anyway. All right, so uh, next up, Get a good look at this. Looks to me like we need to take off the grip next. Uh, I will note that the grip, there's a little washer on these, which I didn't see any washers on any of these other bits here. Uh, that's probably to kind of disperse the load a little bit on the plastic on the grip. It must be thin in there. There's the grip. Okay, up next, let's take a look. So my guess is that these panels need to come off next. I think what we'll do is let's remove this. And let's remove this back section. I don't know if it's absolutely necessary, but we'll give it a go. Okay, again, another uh, another different Allen wrench for this. Let me see. So that's three different size. That's three different size uh, screw heads. Okay, what should we do next, guys? What do you think? Let's go ahead and uh, so it's halved here. You can see the two halves together all the way to here. I'm guessing on the bottom too. Yep, it's all halved here. Let's remove this. I don't know if it's necessary or not. I would doubt it, but just to be on the safe side. There is the Swinks little stud. Okay, I think we just need to start taking this apart. So here there's a nut down in here, probably use some type of nut driver to put this together. Give me one second, let me get something. All right, I'm just going to stick this down in here to hold it, screw it. There we go. Okay, 
There's the two cups. Okay, just a point of note here. Uh, yeah, these look like, I'm pretty sure these are machined. In fact, I can see tooling marks on this. But one thing to note is there is a little shelf there at the end here. So if they designed this in such a way that, that this cup went, to, went into this here in the front of the, the deal, that little ridge that's there would be able to hold, hold the plastic piece against the forehead. Anyway, just a thought, I know I mentioned that earlier. All right, next up. I think we just need to take all these out here. So let's do that next. screws Can't hear something here. these four screws have uh, washers on them too Just set those to the side looks like these two halves should come up yep it's already loose here something is retaining it back in here okay I see what it is so whatever's going on with these uh, nuts that are back in here is kind of holding it together. Be right back. All right, I'm just gonna wedge this here and see what it does. It's coming loose fairly easy now. There's one half. Okay, you can see here what they've done here with these nuts for the um, sling uh, stud and the back to hold on the um, um, pad, the butt pad. Uh, it's just this little, I can't remember what they call these. Not T nuts, I'm not sure what those are called, but what they've done here is these just kind of slide right into a, a, a pocket that's formed in here. And they're in there pretty good, so that's what was holding the two halves together. So I'll put this to the side here. Um, this side should come off. It's attached up here somehow. Okay, this is the uh, this is the retaining mechanism for the cheek rest here, and you can see this is a simple design where the screw goes in and it just pushes against the pushes against here, uh, on this bar here. Uh, as opposed to the Bagara, has a single single action that there that kind of clamps them together. Um, so anyway, what I was seeing here, there is a little screw right here. And that appears to be holding this other side against that aluminum. So let's see if we can get that out. So like they've got a hole here to get through to it. That's interesting. So there's the little screw and that side just came right off. This is interesting because this is what I was talking about earlier, having the nut go all the way through as these two halves were put together with the nuts. This is that kind of, um, this is that kind of um, plastic stud I was talking about and having something uh, coarse threaded going into it to hold that could break down the road and just looking at this why that might be that they did that I believe that it is possible and this is actually a pretty good design principle here that with this on the side here on the side if you somehow got a piece of fabric or your sling caught in here in between this aluminum and this outer plastic piece I think there would be a tendency for this to break off or pull away from the uh, uh, aluminum. I don't know if that's why they put that there. It's not on the other side, though. There is a hole here for it on the other side. But I suspect that might be the purpose of that, that screw that was in there, to hold this against the side of the aluminum and not have any tendency for this to pull back and off the side. Don't know if that's the case, but it's interesting that they chose to put that there. I'm just gonna stick that little screw in there, and here we are. 
so you can see here what we have left is this machined piece here and the trigger guard. Let's go ahead and pull the trigger guard off. Okay, there's another, there's another screw. Hold on. Okay, there's uh, another, another screw head type here. I'm not sure what's going on with all these different screw heads. There's the trigger guard assembly. Now having a good chance to look at it, I feel like they could definitely cast that in aluminum is what I would do. Anyway, there's the trigger guard assembly, which leaves us, oh, here's the rear action screw. Um, let's not get the two of these confused because I think one is longer than the other. Oh no, they're the same size. Okay, perfect. Uh, so all that's left is this handle piece here, and it looks like there's two Allen wrenches, and I can tell you already it's a different size. Hold on. That is in there pretty good. I'm guessing that is Loctited, guys. I'm not going to take these two out but it looks like it appears that these two just thread right into the uh, upper receiver section and they have slotted they have slotted the receiver to accept this I think if I were designing this there would have been a, a T up here at the top that would have engaged into that piece there. That would give you just a little bit more support. It might have only required one screw here on the back, but yeah, that, those are design choices we all make, right? Uh, interesting note here. Give me one second. Okay, one thing to note here. I don't know if this is a design option or not, but let me show you something. This is an opportunity potentially for MDT. If they redesign this piece here, you could get something like this set up. So it's theoretical that they could design this in such a way, I think this would actually have to be a little bit lower to accept a standard buffer tube rear end and a, a standard um, AR-15 hand grip. I don't know if that's something they're thinking about down the road, but it would be an easy modification. By only redesigning this one piece, they can offer a solution with, uh, with a handguard. So, hey MDT, if you're listening, another opportunity there you can do. Uh, it might not be this type of buffer tube because you would have to put something on the back here to capture this, this big threaded portion, uh, but maybe one of your other offerings you could design so that the um, so the LSS uh, butt stocks and whatnot would actually attach to the rear end. And this would be a pretty easy uh, change here to be able to do that. Anyway, just something to note. Okay, there we go. This thing's completely parked. We have looked at the entire deal from head to toe. This is what's aluminum. The floor grip is what's aluminum here on the front. Um, this is everything that's aluminum. Uh, this is a significant amount of machining that's going on here. The entire channel in here is all aluminum. Uh, so yeah, there, there, there's a lot of aluminum in here, guys. It is rigid. It's a good design. Pretty impressive. So uh, I think what I'll do is uh, I'll go ahead and get this back together. Um, I will more than likely add just a little Loctite to all the little screws here on the back. Um, I will not add it up here in the front, I don't think, because this needs to be able to come off easy. But uh, it doesn't look like there was any Loctite anywhere. Uh, for sure, I'm going to add Loctite here to the cutie cup. Um, if that comes off, you're going to be in deep dookie. Uh, so I'll add some there. Uh, but uh, yeah, let me go ahead and get this back together. And, um, and I'll just leave the camera rolling while, while I do this.
what I was talking about if something got caught on the side there and it, it could open up. I think that's why this is the screw is here, just to give a little bit more support. As you saw, I put some Loctite down in there. Must have some kind of special nut driver that goes down in there. I'm just going to use a Allen key here and just wedge it in. There we go. Yeah, I would definitely put some Loctite there. If this comes loose, you're going to be in a, a world of hurt. So definitely Loctite that piece. are all brass here. This is nice. What we'll do next here is we'll put the vertical grip on. recognized one is long and one is short. Now, I didn't look and see which one came with which, but just looking at it, this wall is thin where the screw goes in, and this wall is thick where the screw goes in, so I think that's the logical places. Okay, so we just need to install the fore end. As you guys know, I'm not going to use this fore end right here. Uh, we are going to put in the uh, enclosed fore end, but I think we're going to need these screws. So we'll put this to the side. Here is the enclosed fore end. Already have screws here for the side pieces. I want to check one thing here. A lot of times with these enclosed four ends, you can't get the barreled action in because the trigger won't clear in the bat. Actually, we got a couple problems here. Okay, uh, I see a problem already. This is going to hit the scope before it ever gets where it needs to be on the receiver. So what we're gonna need to do here is we're gonna need to remove the, uh, remove the sunshade and move that cap back. So uh, let me go ahead and do that. I'll do that off camera. Okay, I've gone ahead and just removed the scope from the barreled action. Um, what we'll do here is, I'm gonna go ahead and install this 
at least temporarily and uh, just take a look here and see if it'll, if it'll install. We'll just install a couple of these screws. All right, that's just temporarily installed here with the enclosed forend. As I said, sometimes the enclosed forends are tough because you can't get the stupid trigger to clear, but let's just see what happens here in this case. Looks like it will clear. Your mileage may vary depending on your rifle. And there are the receivers in there. You can feel that. You can probably hear that. Clearly getting up against the, the deal, so that's nice. We're gonna twist it. Okay, so one thing you'll notice here is with the receiver in, in the uh, chassis, when you rotate this, it's not quite locked in there. Let's see what it's doing. Normally when you have a bedded rifle, all that will be, all that will be tight. Okay, so you can see the wear points here. There's a little wear point right here from turning it. There's another wear point here. And on the back, there's a wear point here. And there's another wear point right here. There are no wear points forward of this block, and I can see this is recessed just slightly. So I don't believe this is in contact with the, uh, with the receiver. Uh, in the chamber area. So what this tells me, since that uh, wear point is there and there, here and here, that this must be designed when you get 60 pounds of pressure down, it's going to pull it down into this lower section here. And the way they have kind of flat surfaces here, I think might interlock it into the deal. We'll go ahead and follow their instructions, which I believe was 60 pounds. Um, so let's do that now, and then we'll go ahead and put the front of the, the deal together. So let's talk about an issue I ran into when I was putting the barreled action into this chassis. Uh, and the issue is with these captured screws here. Now, I still think those captured screws are really cool. Uh, it's a neat feature. You're not going to lose them when you take this in and out. However, it did present a problem when you need to torque these down. Um, and the issue is if you use the Wheeler Fat Wrench, and I believe this will apply to the Fix-It sticks, they come with these little, these little deals here. And the problem is that this, this head isn't long enough to get down in there. It'll actually get caught up in this channel, and, and you can't get it down in there to even torque it down. The rear one's even worse because it's way down in there. In fact, let me show you. Here's the 3 16 Allen key. If we put that down in there and engage the screw, it's a minimum that depth there, which is about, it's more than an inch. I'd say that's an inch and a quarter probably down in there uh, to even engage that screw that's on the back side. So uh, with that said, um, you know, it, it makes it difficult to torque these down to specifications and they're recommending 60 inch pounds. So what I did to uh, overcome this, and you guys might find this useful, um, is I just took a 3 16 Allen key, I cut the head off of here, which left me with just a straight Allen key bar and 3 16 And then inside the Wheeler um, uh, deal is this adapter here to go to a socket. You'll just take a 3 16 inch socket and attach it to this. Stick in your new long Allen key. And then now you can use this entire contraption to get into the back one and torque it down properly. So anyway, um, I just wanted to show you guys that. Uh, quick, easy fix, no special tools required, just a spare 3 16 Allen key that you can cut the back off of. All right, guys, sorry I had to do that off camera. Um, so you'll, uh, you'll put this in here, kind of loosely tighten the screws, slam it down on its butt so it's seating on the recoil lug good. Um, that all seems to be working correctly. All 
right, so now we will install these side panels here. There are two, two uh, I don't know if you guys can see it, but two like uh, index points here on the, where the unlocks are. I'll just make sure it's sitting in those. So we pretty much got this all together. The uh, last thing we need to do is install this uh, weight bar that we purchased. Um, so now's a good time if you don't need the um, sling swivel stud to go ahead and remove that. And then finally the uh, weight will just slide into that channel. And then it comes with these, uh, these uh, nuts here these are those tapered nuts you can see there's already some loctite on them so there's no need to put any loctite there okay so there we are that is the completed build of the MDT XRS chassis. All we have to do left is to install the scope and uh, do a function test. So let's get those kind of installed and, and uh, we'll do a quick function test and then I'll give you my thoughts. All right, so we've got the uh, scope mounted here. Um, I have also uh, gotten our uh, dummy rounds here. These are all dummy rounds. There's no ammo on the bench at all. Uh, we'll go ahead and load these up into our magazine and do a quick function test. Okay, those all went through just fine. Uh, I'm gonna do one more function test. Let me get this set up, hold on. Okay, we've got another 10 loaded here. What we're gonna do this time, guys, is we're going to release the uh, trigger spring um, as we move this, uh, move this forward. So um, what's happening here is I'm just holding the trigger and, and, and moving the bolt forward. So the trigger spring is released, uh, and then we're just gonna test it with, uh, with, while it's cocking. Okay, looking really good. So all of those ejected at about the four o'clock position um, and, and that's just perfect. That's right where I like to see ejection on ARs, bolts, everything. If I can get them at the four o'clock position, I feel like it's going pretty good. So we've run 20 rounds through it or 20 Dunning rounds through it. Uh, seems to be functioning just fine. Uh, let's wrap this up. I'll give you my final thoughts. Okay, Ring Still Nation. Let me give you some final thoughts on our Bagara B14 inside our MDT XRS chassis. You guys have seen every nut and bolt come off of this. What's aluminum, what's plastic. I compare, compared it to the B14R uh, HMR chassis that the B14 came with originally. And uh, so my final thoughts on this, I'm pretty impressed with the chassis. Um, you know, there's a lot of aluminum in there. There's just not plastic bits. Um, I would also add that this chassis probably most similarly compares to the KRG Bravo chassis. Um, they're in just slightly different price points. The KRG, I think, is a little less expensive. Um, but between the two, I, I don't have a KRG Bravo to compare it against, so I can't give any feedback on the KRG Bravo uh, chassis. But what I can tell you is based on the specs I saw online, this chassis is about a pound heavier than the uh, KRG Bravo chassis. For those of you shooting precision rifle, that might be an important consideration for you, that you have the additional weight already baked into the chassis. Those of you that are using this chassis for hunting, you're gonna want as, as uh, light a weight as chassis as possible, and that might be a, uh, a factor for you when you purchase 
your next chassis than the KRG might be what you want to do. They're very similar. I mean, there's an enclosed foreign option for the KRG Bravo chassis. They have unlocks on the sides, things like that. So anyway, that's one you might be looking at. Uh, like I said, extremely impressed with this chassis. Time will tell as we shoot it. We'll do some more reviews on it. Uh, also, in our next video, we got to get this gun balanced so that it's not so tail heavy. It is still tail heavy, even with the one pound weight inside of the um, chassis. However, I have already ordered the um, uh, M-Lock weights that I want to use for this project. Hey guys, if you liked what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, all of these uh, reviews and things, this, this all comes completely out of my pocket. Uh, 100%. I don't do Patreon. I don't currently have any uh, companies that are sponsoring this channel. So everything that you see comes out of my own pocket and, uh, and, and it's totally free for you guys to like, share and subscribe. So if you like what you see and want to continue to see the content, please uh, like, share and subscribe. I'm putting up a little spec right now that tells you how many of you guys are watching this video that are subscribed versus those that are unsubscribed. Just take a minute and click the subscribe button. I really appreciate it. Uh, so guys, uh, that's everything I know about the MDT XRS chassis. I hope you enjoyed the video. Happy shooting.